I'm currently in Duga, which is a facility which had a, uh, a long range missile detection radar. Um, bit of a secret base at the time, but clearly after disaster, it all came to uh, it all came to the fore. Deserted, as you'd expect. I'm just about to have a look around. So, Duga, a city to the north west of Chernobyl, a military base, and I'm standing underneath the, uh, the radar built to um, detect intercontinental ballistic missiles all the way over the other side of the planet. Amazing piece of work. Whilst I'm here, I might as well talk about the elephant in the room, and that's the, uh, the radiation piece and exposure to it. There are three classifications in relation to being exposed to radiation, and that's the, the strength of the radiation, the distance you are from it, and the duration that you are exposed to it. It's measured in sieverts, and one sievert is quite a high dose of radiation. Five or more will kill you. And those who were exposed to this when the uh, power plant blew were exposed to between six and ten and even more. Just meant that they were going to die within the first few weeks. Now a sievert is how they measure the radiation. And it's split into millisieverts and microsieverts. A millisievert is equivalent to a thousandth of a sievert and a microsievert equivalent to a, a thousandth of a millisievert, and that's the maths. So that means a microsievert, which is what we currently measure in, is a millionth of a sievert. When you consider that exposure here for two days puts you in and around 0.4, possibly to 0.7 uh, microsieverts. 
the plane journey here will give you more. So in many respects, it's just as safe walking around here for two days as it is catching a flight. <laughs> to put that into more perspective, a CT scan at the hospital will expose you to about 10 to 15 millisieverts. So it's quite a bit more than what you're getting here today. So, if you're still a bit weary about coming here, don't be. Get yourself on a plane and get yourself down here. Well, that was an epic two days uh, in the north of the country. Um, I didn't want to spoil it or spoil the atmosphere by um, mindless chat. So apologies um, if you didn't get the information you were expecting or there's a lack of information. But besides, I didn't think it was going to do it justice in any case. Speaking of which, in order to do this place justice, you've got to come here. Um, I did a two day tour with a company called ChanelBorwell.com. And clearly, there are a number of other operators out there, but this one was right on the money. Um, really helpful, uh, really friendly and warm, and really welcoming. I can't praise them enough. Uh, my tour, two days, cost me 420 odd euros, which is about 390 pounds. And for that, you get um, the 220 kilometer transfer from Kiev to Chernobyl and back all the paperwork and documentation uh, to get you into the exclusion zone. That's all done for you. The transfers between all of the sites for the two days and then entry into the power plant. Um, and where else can you get to walk around an exploded nuclear reactor? 
you also get two lunches at the uh, Chernobyl uh, plant canteen. Um, one um, dinner, one breakfast, and that includes accommodation in the hotel um, in Chernobyl, in the exclusion zone. Um, you get all the measurement equipment, so all the dosimeters are there for you. And most importantly, you get knowledge, knowledge that you wouldn't believe. No, I struck really, really lucky, because I had a private group um, where it was just me, two others, and the guide, um, uh, Alina, really, really good. Uh, and we're pretty much everywhere to ourselves for the entire two days, and you can't ask for more than that. Uh, and I suppose that actually the best time to come here, if you can stand a little bit of cold and drizzle, is now. Coming in the summer is all well and good, but you can't see many of the attractions because the foliage grows and it covers absolutely everything. There were crowds, loads more people here, and so the options for decent photographs was out the window. And then this heat. Now I'm told in the summer it can get anywhere up to 40 degrees, and you've still got to wear your long sleeve tops and leg wear, and there's no short and t-shirts at all. And that's for the entire time you're here, and that's due to the radiation that's around. Speaking of which, I've been there, uh, I've done it, and I've also got the t-shirt, literally. You get that in the tour as well. Um, now, I was able to walk around all the way through the reactor at Chernobyl, or the, the power plant, shall I say, except for reactor r control room number four, which is where the, the infamous AZ-5 button that was pressed, that caused the explosion is. Um, that's an extra 100 euros plus, I think. Uh, and plus the radiation in that control room is significantly higher than everywhere else. But I did get to go everywhere else and the other control rooms that I went in are more or less the same as reactor number four. Now, this last two days has been a, a great experience. Um, much better than I thought it was going to be and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've got half a day left in Kiev now, which is tomorrow before the flight home. Um, so I'm going to try and get some of the stuff done that I didn't do when I first got here. The Ukraine. Again, who knew? I don't have to party to have fun, you see. So behind me, the, uh, the Motherland Monument, standing at over 203 feet. And that sword that you see in its, uh, its right hand is actually 16 metres high. It weighs nine tonnes. And also it tells the shield, which is 13 metres by eight metres. It's, it's massive, uh, with the emblem of the, uh, the Russian hammer and sickle on there, a representation of the domination at the time. It's superb.
that's the end of my four days in the Ukraine. What a marvellous place. Great people. I've had a whale of a time. Uh, Kiev, what a city. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to do it justice. I've only been running around for half a day. So I have to apologise if I haven't got everything in that I, sh I should have got in or that you were expecting. But what's next for me now? Well, back to Blighty. Going to uh, jump in the van when I get home and continue with the rest of my trip. So I'll see you then.